Well, hey guys. Now, I was on the Amazonian, aka Amazon, if you're new here, shopping around as I often do. Amazon started showing me supplements that claim to reverse gray hair probably because I've done a lot of videos for you all lately on different dietary supplements that claim to be good for your hair, your skin, your nails. So I think Amazon just assumes that I'm interested in buying these types of dietary supplements. Can you actually reverse gray hair? We're gonna talk about it in today's video. Gray hair, totally normal. In fact, I happen to think gray hair is very attractive and it's part of normal aging. It's part of the normal aging process. By the age of 61 to 65, about 90% of people will have some amount of gray hair and many, many, many people start getting gray hairs at a much younger age. Why does our hair turn gray? It turns gray because it loses color. Loss of hair color is the result of loss of the pigment melanin that is present in our skin, our eyes, and of course our hair. Hair growth is a very active process, high energy demand. It needs a lot of nutrients, a lot of growth factors, a lot of stuff, and it receives a lot of signals from our body a lot of different chemicals, electrical signals, and hormones like stress hormones can seriously impact hair growth and hair health. If you've ever experienced significant, significant stress, like being hospitalized, maybe you developed a viral illness, then you'll know that your hair feels that very, very much so, and that can result in a halt of hair growth. And about three months later, you get a lot of shedding of the hair. So you probably at some point in your life will appreciate how high demand the hair follicle is in terms of energy and anything that shifts energy balance in, in your body in terms of you know an acute stressful event, whether it be a car accident, surgery, fever, things where like growing hair is not top priority, making a baby, birthing a baby, these kinds of things, all those hormonal fluctuations, they all influence the hair cycle and tell it to whoosh, quiet down. We're not, we're not here to make long, shiny, healthy hair right away. Just go to sleep. We'll wake you back up later. Hair growth happens below the skin surface. And down there, there is an area of the hair follicle where you have this population of cells known as stem cells that give rise to the pigment producing cells. They start to not be as, you know, responsive or maybe they dwindle. Truthfully, we don't fully understand all of the details as to why people go gray, why they start turning gray at a certain age, etc., etc. But it has become clear over time that the graying process actually can be reversed in some situations. There's a cycle to your hair growth. There's a growing phase known as anagen. There is a resting phase known as catagen, and there is a shedding phase known as telogen. Pigment production follows this cycle. It's turned on during the growing phase, aka anagen. It's shut off during the resting phase catagen and is completely inactivated during telogen. This cycle is highly influenced by, again, all of these different chemicals and, and proteins in your body necessary for building the hair and dictating the hair growth cycle. As the hair grows out of the scalp, it hardens. It preserves the prior molecules that it's been exposed to and, and you really can see that if you actually take a hair strand and look at it under the microscope, you can see differences in the pigment based on potential prior exposures. Just like when you cut a tree down and you see the stump has those rings and if you look at the rings it's like a timeline of the tree's lifespan. The, the rings like for example if the tree was growing during a time period of like I don't know severe drought you can see that and something about the ring within the stump. Your hair shaft is very much the same kind of idea and that if you take a hair strand and you look at it under the microscope sometimes it can reveal past things. It's it's almost like some kind of omniscient, like, I don't know, supernatural thing, but it's, it's, it's actually very scientific. <laughs> so scientists have been really interested in this for a long time because they want to understand how those populations of cells, how they are controlled and, and, you know, life events that influence the aging process. That's an interesting model, that little population, that niche of stem cells. It's a very interesting population to study in efforts to just better understand aging at the cellular levels. So it's really an area of active, act, active research actually. So researchers have actually mapped um, pigment patterns in the hair shaft to prior stressful events. They can correlate back stressful events to loss of pigment. Once that stressful event has been removed, they can see reversal back to normal pigment production in the hair. So yeah, you definitely in some cases can get re 
reversal of gray hair. Say for example, you were going through a really stressful life event. Some white hairs can truly regain pigment. Researchers have mapped back hundreds of different proteins in the hair and the white hairs have an overabundance of proteins that are playing a role in energy and metabolism. Who is the powerhouse of the cell? <laughs> the mitochondria. So a lot of mitochondrial proteins are differentially expressed in those white hairs that correlate back to periods of severe stress. Whereas the pigmented part of the hair where you get repigmentation up close to the scalp, like it's coming back, those pigmented areas have a totally different protein constitution. So it really suggests that metabolism and energy play a key role in the graying process. So the working idea is that you get to a point in your life where you're kind of at at a crossroads, so to speak, and that the hair is a little bit more vulnerable to being pushed over the edge for going gray. So for example, you might undergo a viral illness, get really sick. It's enough to tip that population of cells over the edge and start going, going gray, stop making pigment. Whereas it's just at the crossroads where you can bring them back uh, provided that the stressful event has been removed and those cells can begin making pigment again. It is definitely possible and it definitely does happen. Why that population becomes vulnerable with time is not entirely clear. It's obviously heavily influenced by genetics. Some people, um, they, you know, their parents went gray at a younger age, they go gray at a younger age. It's also possible that there's at some point in the lifespan of the hair follicle, there's a point where the cells are just not as good at repairing DNA. Maybe the melanocyte stem cell population starts to decline, or maybe the machinery, the enzymes that are required to make pigment just don't work as well anymore. There's definitely something to be said for oxidative stress pushing these cells over the edge, so to speak. We know that people who smoke have you know, earlier onset of gray hair. Smoking is very inflammatory, produces a lot of free radicals, depletes your body of antioxidants. And there's also some research showing an association with people who are under just chronic psychologic stress, having premature gray, earlier onset of gray hair, more gray hair. It's even debatable as what constitutes premature graying. I mentioned you know, at the beginning of the video that by the time you're in your 60s, there's, there's a good chance you're gonna have some gray hair. I mean, it's just normal and you shouldn't feel bad about it. And like I said, I think it's very attractive, but a lot of people get gray hairs you know, in their 20s or 30s. So there's kind of this arbitrary cutoff that considers premature graying as starting to go gray before the age of 20. But does that necessarily mean that there's something wrong with you? No. Plenty of people have gray hair for the first time, you know, in, in high school, perfectly healthy. Doesn't seem to necessarily be a sign of like impending doom. It's just, you know, maybe you were born with hair follicle cells that are just not, you know, as, as ready to continue on making pigment. Um, but again, I want to point out that it's not, it's not a problem whatsoever to go gray. Like don't feel bad about yourself. But that being said, there are some situations where you can lose hair color, go gray, that are important to pay attention to and reversible. And those are nutrient deficiencies. The process of making hair demands a lot of energy. Nutrient deficiencies can impact pigment production in the hair. If you look at the hair of people who have severe protein energy malnutrition, quashier core, if you look at their hair, um, there's something called a flag sign. There's alternating of white and pigment. This happens because of a deficiency likely in the amino acid tyrosine. Tyrosine is an amino acid that is a precursor to pigment, melanin. And when somebody is in severe malnutrition, they don't have enough of that to spare to, to make their hair color. Um, but a lot of people who are just, you know, have poor nutrition, maybe crash diet, for sure, if you look up close at their hair, like under um, uh, a magnifying glass, like a dermatoscope, you can see areas of the hair that are lighter and darker. And this kind of, like I said, like just like cutting a tree down, looking at the trunk and the rings, the hair is very much the same. You know, if you're gonna lose a ton of weight very quickly, um, then that's a situation where you might not only have an increase in hair shedding because the hair is like not prioritizing growing, but you might notice a change in the hair color as well. 
as it relates to that. And with that change in hair color, um, you also can have a change in hair texture. The hair can be a lot more brittle and prone to breakage. Um, micronutrient deficiencies also likely can lead to gray hair that is reversible. This is something that is just kind of understood, but not actually really that well researched because, you know, as I pointed out in a lot of my videos on nutrition, a lot of times it's challenging to, to when somebody presents with a nutritional deficiency, they often have more than one deficiency so it can be hard to nail it down to any one specific micronutrient but the one that always comes up um, and, and probably has the most data for an association is b12 deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency patients who have the autoimmune condition pernicious anemia that's basically a condition where because of an autoimmune process you don't make something called intrinsic factor, which is necessary to, to absorb vitamin B12. Um, and for that reason, they have, they have an anemia because vitamin B12, as a reminder, really important for blood cell formation. So they develop an anemia, it's called pernicious anemia. And there's an association there with premature gray hair. Once that's corrected, depending on if it's you know, caught early enough, there's a potential actually for reversal. 52 people who self-identified as having premature gray hair, meaning gray hair before the age of 20. They looked at those people and they assessed their micronutrients in comparison to a control group. They looked at B12, biotin, and folate, and they also looked at basic blood work. 55.8% of the people in this study who endorsed having premature gray hair had an underlying B12 deficiency, as opposed to the control group, only 17.3%. Some of the people who noted that they had premature gray hair, they actually had physical exam findings consistent with B12 deficiency, which as a reminder, I have a video all about the signs of B12 deficiency. And then on basic blood work, a lot of the people who had premature gray hair also had elevated um, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is a you know, sign of inflammation. A lot of the people who had premature gray hair also had uh, folate deficiency. Now, some of the people who had folate deficiency also had B12 deficiency. No one who identified as having premature aging had frank biotin deficiency, however, although their biotin levels were on the low end of normal. But if you do have premature graying as a result of B12 deficiency, you know, this is something where it's, it's definitely not just cosmetic, it's like, whoa, Oh, wait, because B12 deficiency unaddressed can be life-threatening. Other studies show an association with low iron, low uh, calcium, and low vitamin D and premature and premature graying. So, you know, I'm, as I've said multiple times, there's nothing wrong with going gray. You should embrace it. You know, I, I think it's great. I mean, everyone does what they want with their hair, right? You, you have free will, but don't feel bad about having gray hair. All that, you know, wonderful, yay, gray hair, looks great, yada, yada, yada. However, you know, you don't want to, if you suspect that you have an underlying deficiency, it's definitely worth bringing to the attention of your healthcare provider to say, you know, my hair started going gray. I know it's part of the normal aging process, but you know, I've been really stressed out. Uh, maybe I'm not getting the right micronutrients. You know, maybe I, I'm concerned I might have an underlying B12 deficiency or something. It's definitely worth bringing up because, you know, yes, common things being common is part of normal age related change, but in these rare exceptions, there could be an underlying nutrient deficiency explaining the premature onset of gray hair that could be corrected. And yes, the hair will revert back to pigment possibly, but importantly, you will have addressed an underlying problem with your health, which is a, a nutrient deficiency. It's also well known that uh, iron deficiency anemia can cause something called segmental heterochromia. You can see it change, a, a banding-like pattern of alternating dark, light, dark for the hair. Proximal just means close up to the scalp and distal means the end of the hair. And you can see there in the middle, there's loss of color in the hair that corresponds to the time period of iron deficiency. Then up close you have where the hair is growing back to its normal color again. You, might, you may have some underlying medical problem that's caused a lot of inflammation in your body that is negatively impacting the, the health of that kind of vulnerable population. For example, there's a case out there of a patient who developed uh, a cancer and started going gray. The cancer was treated and once the cancer was treated, the hair color returned to 
to, to pigmented. And it was thought to be related to the, the idea that, you know, cancers are very inflammatory. They put out a lot of inflammatory mediators, and then that was what was impacting the health of the, the follicle, those, those, those cells, pushing them over the edge. And then once the cancer went away with treatment, they went back to, to functioning properly. So I started out this video talking about the supplements that Amazon was trying to sell me. Should you try to take supplements to reverse gray hair? No. Um, there's no research, good research, clinical trial studies on any type of dietary supplement for reversing graying hair. And, and if anything, you know, some supplements, they can, they can potentially cause harm. So in summary, common things being common, it's perfectly normal and part of the aging process to be expected to go gray. Nothing to be ashamed about. Don't feel bad about it. If you want to diet, diet, it's a personal choice. Um, don't let other people make you feel bad with their unsolicited feedback comments. In, in some circumstances, however, namely nutrient deficiencies, profound stress, certain underlying medical problems, where the hair is tipped over the edge to start going gray, if those underlying issues are corrected, the nutrient deficiency or the stressful event is removed, then there is actually the potential to bring those cells back on board to start making pigment again. Um, it can happen. So um, it's, it's, not, it's not impossible, but in the majority of cases, once you start going gray, it's just part of the normal aging process. All right, y'all, I hope this video was informative and that you enjoyed it. On the Insulate, I'm going to link one of my recent videos all about supplements. So check that one out next so you know more about the supplements that these people are trying to sell you for your hair, your skin, and your nails. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.